let's look at an industry that has been totally ravaged by the social distancing rules. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. So we are going to look at a global airlines ETF, JETS. The reason why this is a very, very, very interesting ETF, it's because you could make a very strong case that these companies are artificially low. So it's not that they are doing poorly inherently, they simply are not allowed to do business. Hence, there could be some great opportunities. Of course, an alternative to an ETF, that is to invest in the inv individual stocks. The issue though, is that the not being able to do business is such a, it's such a dire uh, thing that numerous companies are likely to go bankrupt. By getting into an ETF, you are able to at least get away from the... Well, you, you, you are reducing the bankruptcy risks with the diversification zone. So here is the weekly data points, all uh, the action in this ETF. Going all the way back here actually to um, April 2015. So things were go going, um, you know, okay. Moved sideways and then, you know, with the contagion we have a total and utter crash. So it crashed. 65% here from the high to the low. And we haven't seen much of a bid yet. Though from an RSI standpoint we are extremely oversold. And interestingly there's a very weak correlation with the S&P 500. Only 23%. So let's here go to the daily data points. So we are below all, literally every single key moving average. However, could this be forming a bit of a bottom? You know, it could. I'm not going to say that this is the bottom, but the thing is that it really cannot get worse for this industry. They are not allowed to do much in the way of business. So. I think that in this particular industry, the horrible news will be priced in more fully than in other industries. And an added benefit with airlines compared to other, you know, social distancing uh, affected industries is that airlines, it's, it's not simply recreation. The dirty secret of, of the airline industry is that it is a part of defense. Because the planes can actually, and this is a part of their design, they can easily be turned into military craft or craft used for disasters and stuff like that. So the airline industry is strategically beneficial, meaning, meaning there are clear limits to how, uh, to how much damage will be allowed to be done in that industry. If you look at the daily data points here, you can see that we are still, well, we are slightly above the oversold uh, territory. The correlation with the S&P 500 is a whopping 87% here, actually. But here it was much lower. If we go further back, you can see that the correlation can be as low as 19% and as high as... Uh, yeah, basically where we are now. So let's look under the hood. Because this is an ETF, it contains many different stocks. So the expense ratio is 0.60%. Um, there's, I, I think this is literally like the only one, only like airline ETF. Yeah, the ETF is however the only choice for a direct approach to airlines and related industries. The fund puts about 70% of its weight on US large cap passenger airlines. So assets under management is 282 million US dollars, which is you no know, decent. 
the average daily dollar volume is 19 million dollars so it's not it is not like super liquid but there is some liquidity here most people will be able to buy this ETF with not much problem not suited for day trading but from a more longer term perspective you know it, it is interesting um the weighted average market cap 16.6 billion US dollars PE ratio 7 price book 1.7 35 the number of holdings so the vast majority of companies here is uh, USA uh, pro approaching like 80% so it does say that it's global jets but you know it's it is certainly leaning heavily to USA so here are some of the you know, the biggest biggest components you got Southwest Airlines Delta Airlines American Airlines Skywest Alaska Air Group Spirit Airlines Ryanair you got Ryanair you got Air Canada Airbus you know Air France so Finnair Lufthansa I mean there's quite a few you know of the key players here do we have a Boeing Let's see, do we have a Boeing, a Boeing, a Boeing? Doesn't seem like we have a Boeing. I would have liked to see Boeing here, but yeah. They have Airbus though. So yeah, uh, I think that, I think this is basically a very interesting... Uh, uh, let's act actually look at some of the companies in this ETF. So here we have Airbus. So. Airbus deployed in fight against the contagion. So here you can see what they make. Uh, so commercial aircraft, helicopters, space, and defense. So you know, it, so it goes far beyond you know pure recreational use. These are very strategically important. Here is Hawaii, Hawaiian Airlines. This is certainly on the more recreational side. But then you have General Dynamics. Here we are, you know, in the uh, defense business. So they got, you know, aerospace, but also, uh, you know, water and the land uh, vehicles. And then you have Southwest Airlines. Here we are back to the more recreational side. So that's just a few of the companies. So all in all, um, this is very interesting. Um, very interesting opportunity. The stock is the ETF. ETF is really, really low. Maybe, maybe this is a double bottom. It's a possibility. If you look at the S and P five hundred, we have recently seen a solid bounce here. You could make the case that this is an inverse head and shoulders pattern. The thing is that it is still ex extremely unlikely that the longest bull market in uh, history will be followed by the shortest bear markets. That simply doesn't make sense. So it's uh, certainly a high probability that this bounce is going to be like similar uh, like previous bear market rallies where we do have some strong gains powered by short squeeze because you no know, people who are shorting, they need to cover their shorts. Um, they don't have to, but often they will. But eventually, we usually see that the selling pressure um, resumes. And one of the silly ideas about the current uh, bear market is that it is all about the contagion. It's never like that. You know, the dot com bubble was not all about tech stocks. The financial crisis was not all about the housing market. There's always many factors impacting the market. And the most important ones are usually the ones you don't focus, focus enough on. I think one of the key factors beyond you know, the contagion is debt. There's a lot of debt in the system. That's a huge systemic risk. And uh, the response to the contagion has been, you know, get the printing process going and, uh, you know, print more money. And long term, that is not, uh, there's not any empire throughout history that's been able to just uh, 
wave the magic wand and uh, make those uh, systemic long-term problems go away. Because when you are kicking the can down the road again and again and again, they will pile up. So whatever you do, of course, uh, you want to let the trend be your friend. Um, this is a very interesting ETF. A lot of the bad news is priced in. There is a rally in the market, uh, risk on, uh, but I would say be be careful, because people were really bullish here, all time high, and then total crash, and people were really bearish here, roaring uh, rally. So this is a very volatile and dangerous market. <laughs>